Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Hausfrau. Welcome back to my channel. Today is part two of a series that I am doing on how to process a wool fleece all the way from the raw, lanolin rich, dirty, uh, straight off the sheep fleece into a beautiful finished knitted or woven product. Now, in the first video, we talked about how to skirt a raw fleece and today I'm going to be prepping the fleece for washing. So this is a South Down baby doll and they don't have a very long staple. Now I am not picky about what I spin. I don't have the luxury of being picky because I want to use what is locally produced and uh, sustainably produced and available to me at a price that works within my very tight budget. And luckily for me, this fleece was free. So. So as I talked about in my last video, um, we're going to be spinning a wool that is uh, quite gray, but gray has a lot of variation of color in it. And there are hues of brown and almost black. And I love the heathered effect that a gray wool creates in the finished garment. So again, the staple is not super long, right? And that's okay. I can still totally spin with this. What I'm gonna be doing today is breaking it apart into locks to get it ready for washing. Now this is the outside. I can see it's a little bit matted, covered in a lot of dirt and poop and vegetative matter. And then this is the part that was against the sheep. So we're gonna be plucking off these locks and laying them into baskets, mad props to other uh, spinners, particularly the Yakuna Fiber Arts Guild, who have taught me that the best way to wash wool locks is to get a basket and drill some holes in the bottom. These are from the dollar store and wash in a basket so that you don't agitate and felt the wool. So when I separate the locks of my fiber, I tend to pull quickly and then you get a true idea of the staple length of your fiber. So I'm gonna be breaking my locks off like this and laying them in my basket like this. So just be aware when you are separating out your locks, again, quick yank, so I get a good idea of the staple length. When you're separating out your locks for spinning, um, it's really important that you take off any extra little tiny bits that are called second shavings or second passes. And that's where the sheep shear had to give a second round to get any of the little nubbins of hair that they missed the first time. Those little short bits are not things that you want in your spinning for multiple reasons. Number one, they're itchy. They don't lay smoothly and uh, the scales don't um, work together the same way in the fiber. And so they tend to stick out and be pokey and create a more itchy garment. The second thing is that they come off of your garment more easily. If you've ever bought a sweater and it pills very quickly, those little second shorty fibers are what is creating that pilling. So again, here's my locks. I find it's much easier to separate my wool into locks before washing than it is to wash a whole daggone sheep at once, right? So I could wash this whole big thing in one go and it creates a big drippy mess. And as I am cleaning it and getting the lanolin scoured out of it, I'm much more likely to felt it somewhat, which is something I don't want. It's gonna damage the fiber and create a lot more work for me. So I find it much easier for a fair amount of the nicer fibers that I work with um, to separate it out into locks, into a basket and wash them like that. Now for this fleece, because it's a relatively short staple and it was a free fleece, I would be tempted to wash it all in one go. If I had an expensive fleece um, with those longer staples and that I felt was worth more attention, I would definitely be sorting it into locks. So for the purpose of this video, I am sorting this fleece, but a lot of times if I get a free fleece with a little bit shorter staple or the quality is a little bit more questionable, I'm still perfectly good for spinning, not such poor quality that I'm gonna be putting it into the compost, then what I do is I wash the whole thing at once and if a little bit of it felts, oh well, it's a little extra labor. But for those nicer fleeces, this is definitely worth it. So here we go, this is what I mean, those little second bits, look how short these pieces are. These are no good for spinning. So when you're looking at the quality of your fleece, oh, here's a little bitty end. This is no good for spinning. These little bits will be itchy. 
If you want to see if your fleece is good quality and um, your sheep hadn't experienced ill health or poor nutrition and that you have a strong fleece, you want to take a piece of your fleece here and you want to just pull it and it should stay together as one lock, okay? If you pull it and it breaks somewhere along, that is not the whole distance. Look, this is the distance of the lock. So I have two even pieces, that's not breakage. But if it breaks off at the end, one end or the other, you know that your sheep had experienced some health issues or something that caused a weakness in the fiber, that's gonna be tougher to spin. So while you're going through this process of separating out the locks, if you notice that it breaks really easily and not, uh, along the full staple length, then you have a fleece that is probably not very good for spinning. Again, separate out those little shorty bits. It's funny, this sheep has quite a bit shorter staple than I am used to spinning, but that's what I get when it's free, you just go with it. So a friend of a friend uh, gave me this fleece to work with and we're just gonna see how it spins up. I will take any fleece. I'm always down to try out a new breed of sheep. There are so many breeds of sheep out there that, goodness, it's just endless possibilities. And you may find a breed that you um, absolutely love and they're your favorite breed to spin off of for a while. Hmm, there's some shorty bits on here. I think I'm gonna pitch this piece. Now, when you separate out your locks, if you want to keep the color gradation pretty even, um, I kind of keep the like colors together. If I don't care and I want a more heathered effect instead of more of a variegated effect, then I just go ahead and mix them all in in the basket and I don't worry about getting the darker color separated from the lighter. Now, if you pull your fiber pieces slowly, you get these, it strings out and they want to stick together because that's the nature of wool. And if we're separating by locks, I want the individual locks. So I want to give that quick tug and that will help quickly separate the fiber. So here are four baskets that are ready to be washed. I'm gonna do a couple more and then in my next video, I'll show you how I wash them. You may think, Angela, these are a little bit short stapled and I'm okay with that. So for me, it's really important to use community resources, source things locally and sustainably. And I also wanna honor the fact that my family lives on a really tight budget and I don't wanna violate that budget. So if someone offers me a free fleece, I'm gonna make use of it. And I guarantee you the socks or whatever I make from this will get used until they are worn out and then they will get composted. This will not go to waste. I also really like spinning with different staple length of fibers because it may be an ideal to have a really long fiber. It's nice and easy to draft with, but I don't mind varying it up. It keeps spinning much more interesting to me. So for now, I'm going to stack these all together. It's okay if they're flattened out. And I'm actually going to go and um, make dinner for my family. It's 100 degrees out and I have made dinner outside here in the crock pot and I'm going to go serve it up for them and I'll be back soon. All right, it is 100 degrees out and I am absolutely sweltering. So I am going to quit here. I've got four baskets of locks sorted and the rest of my fleece is skirted and waiting to be sorted into baskets. Some of it will be separated into locks like this. And in the next video, I'll show you some of it I just plunk into big baskets and wash um, when I run out of steam or baskets that feel like the fiber quality is a little bit lower. So if you got something out of this video, please consider subscribing to learn more about traditional homemaking skills, how to be a professional housefrau. If you are interested in supporting this channel, you can check out my Patreon down in the description. And I also have a PayPal if you just wanna throw a couple bucks at my channel and say, hey, thanks, Angela. I really appreciate the work that you do. That means a lot to me and my family. It helps support me and my four children. So thank you if that is an option that is available to you. I'll be back soon with more practical homemaking skills. Thanks.